Okay, this is uh, part two of my automatic float charger. I got this circuit from Talking Electronics and I was having a little bit of trouble with getting the right relay for this float charger. The relay that I got before is called Chien G Q I A N J I and it's a 10 amp 10 amp 12 volt relay. I had a little bit of problem with this probably due to the uh, whole voltage of the um, contacts and with this charger I can set it to charge up to a certain voltage, say 13.7, and it will automatically cut off. But the problem with it's this this uh, relay is it won't cut back in. It won't reconnect at uh, 12 volt or 12.5. Um, it wouldn't do that. So I got another relay, and it worked. This one is Song Li. S O N G L E. I got this off eBay, I think a dollar or so. Again, it's a 12 volt 10 amp relay, and this worked uh, pretty good. And uh, I, the cut in voltage is just a little bit under 12 volt, maybe 12 volt. And the uh, cutout voltage is adjustable by the 1K potentiometer here. And you can set it to whatever you like. I generally set it to 13.7. It would charge up to that and then when it cut, cuts out, the voltage would drop back. Uh, if you have an old battery like the one that I have here, it will only uh, hold at 12.5 uh, or 12.6 because uh, it wouldn't really charge higher than that. So. Yeah, um, the modification I made to the original circuit is I added an LED light uh, that would indicate the end of charging. When uh, Before you apply any current, the contacts is uh, normally closed. That means when you, as soon as you plug in your uh, transformer, it will start charging. And then when it reaches a certain voltage, battery voltage, the contact would open. And then um, the LED is attached to the open contact and the negative rail. Uh, and uh, when the contact is open, it will light up. So this voltmeter is optional. I would probably include that. Okay, so here it goes. Um, I hope this diagram will help you because sometimes I find it difficult myself to read the circuit and all the symbols, especially when you don't, you're not an engineer. And um, for this, you need about eight components, or seven, or even six. You can do it. Uh, you can start off with a relay. The one I got is a Song Li, Song Li, and get it on off eBay. And uh, the relay would have this would be the coil terminal, and you have a um, the common term terminal, and you would have the, the contacts here, and then you have the Okay, you have the contact here, and in this relay, the normally close is over here on this side. Here, this would be the normally open, normally close. So, uh, this would be where your 12 volt positive comes in. Okay, assuming that this is your 12 volt. 
and you would have a resistor here or two or three if you want it depends on you know uh, your resistor the the ones I use are one watt one ohm I put them in series you can put two or three of them depending on the charger that you use whether it is uh, 300 MA or 500 or 1 amp and like I said before if it feels warm and you can't really hold on to it uh, when you touch the resistor you probably need another one uh, or higher resistance higher wattage uh, resistor so I was using two in series because that's what I have I have a one watt uh, one ohm resistor so the positive connects to that and, and this here connects to your battery uh, your your charger okay say 500 ma okay here so these are the coil terminals and you have a transistor here you can use any NPN transistor. I'm using a BC547. For the BC547, this one here on the left would be the collector, the base, and the emitter. The emitter goes to ground. Okay. This would be your negative here. All right, this goes to ground and um, negative here All right this goes to ground and um, the coil terminal over here connects to the collector collector of your transistor okay and then the base of your transistor connects to a potentiometer is a one one K ohm one K ohm potentiometer right there's a knob here that you can turn and there are usually three terminals, so the base would connect to the middle terminal. Okay. And then the uh, terminal here on the left side is uh, connected to a 10K resistor. Okay. This is a 10K resistor. You can also use a Zener dial, 12 volt, but I didn't use it. And uh, I haven't tried that, but you can connect the 10K resistor. Uh, 10K resistor will connect to your battery over here. This is a 12 volt, positive, negative, and the 10K connect to over there and then okay and you can connect a dial you can use like a 1N4004 or 007 and put it across a terminal like that and uh, it's supposed to prevent the back EMF from uh, damaging your transistor, but uh, the original circuit doesn't really require it. There's a silver band here, so this is the orientation of the dial. Okay, so the wire from the normally closed which is a positive goes to 
the positive of your battery. If you put it here, it will go to the positive of the battery. So when you plug in your charger, it will start charging. Okay. Now, this is the normally open terminal. And I would connect an LED and put like a 2 to 3K resistor uh, in between. You can put it here or here. Okay, 2K. Depends, you know, if you want to use a red or green, that's, that's okay. And uh, this end here would go to your negative. Okay, if I can, you can hook it up with a piece of wire to the negative, 2 or 3K. If it's too bright, it depends on, because this will run off your, um, your charger. When the charging is done, the uh, relay opens and the light would light from the, uh, current from the charger. So if you have like a 19 volt, you might want to use a 3K. If you have like a 15 volt charger, you can probably get by with a 2K resistor. Uh, so it won't burn up your LED. Okay, uh, let's see it. At this point, it's pretty much done, except uh, you also need according to the circuit here, you need a capacitor over here, the positive here, the negative side facing there, and the capacitor, you can use like uh, anything like 50 volts and uh, this is a 22 microfarad, so the silver band is the negative side, so you have to make sure you, you use the right, I mean, put, put it in the right orientation. So this is negative, positive, 22 UF, say 50 volt. Uh, okay, that would prevent the relay from chattering when it's uh, getting close to dropping out and uh, stop stop of the uh, charging. So and then of course your negative here would connect to the negative side of your battery. Okay, and then this here would be your 500 ma, about 18 volt open open voltage, open circuit. I know my handwriting is terrible, but maybe if I explain it this way, it will be easier to understand. I hope I uh, didn't misconnect anything. And basically, I think that's it. And if you want to um, lower the cut in voltage, you can add a resistor, but I don't think that is necessary. Um, I think this would work. Just plug it in, and if you don't see any smoke, then uh, that then it should be working. And just use your multimeter to check your um, voltage of your battery, and. Uh, what you have to do to set it up is connect it to the battery and as soon as the oh I forgot one thing here the the potentiometer the middle one connects to the base of the uh, transistor and PN BC547 and then uh, this the third terminal here you connect it with a piece of wire to your ground. Okay, that's the ground. 
Yeah, I know I forgot something. Yeah, so when you're charging, you connect a voltmeter to it, and um, when it gets to 13.7, you turn your potentiometer, uh, probably clockwise, and you would see the uh, relay opens up and your LED lighting. That means it will stop charging. And then uh, that would be your cutoff voltage. And to see what kind of cut in voltage you have, you can connect your battery, uh, leave everything hooked up, connect to your battery, uh, a light bulb or whatever, or even uh, some resistors to um, put a load on it. And when the voltage of the battery drops to around 12 volt or so, the LED would go out and start charging. So ideally, if you have done it right, that is what should happen. All right, I know uh, this is a little windy and long and and um, and a little boring, but uh, uh, I I also was trying to use a trim part, uh, a different kinds of uh, potentiometer. It's also one K, but that trim part is a little more difficult to adjust than this kind of uh, potentiometer. This is two three dollars, two dollars. Again, off on eBay. And then if you make it look nice, you can buy this terminal block. Um, yeah, and you can um, solder your resistors to the your circuit board that you use. And you use a uh, input like this. A plug in an input. So everything looks nicer. Here, I was trying to see if I could control the cut-in uh, a little better, but it didn't really work the way I wanted it to work. So the original circuit is fine, and you can add a voltmeter, another another two dollars or a dollar and a half. You can add a voltmeter, and it would it would give you a nice indication of the voltage, and then. Uh, you solder all the parts onto onto your board, and how much does it cost? It depends on uh, where you got the parts. It can be like whole thing could be under five dollars. All right. I hope uh, if you have any questions, you can try to you can ask, but uh, I can't guarantee I know the answer because I'm experimenting myself. And again.